Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today for episode two of IEDC's Higher Education Advisory Committee's 2018 webinar series featuring the University of Idaho Office of Research and Economic Development. This session is part of a series designed for IEDC's Higher Education Advisory Committee to initiate information sharing among committee members and to highlight exemplary programs in university economic development partnerships. Uh, my name is Eli Dial. I'm associate editor of IEDC's newsletter, Economic Development Now, and the staff liaison to IEDC's Higher Education Committee. Uh, before we begin, there's just a few housekeeping items. Today's webinar is being recorded, and this recording will be shared uh, with the committee members and attendees today uh, for those who could not make the presentation. Uh, participants will be muted during the presentation phase of the webinar, uh, but we'll open up a Q&A phase at the end. And um, to pose a question, you can do so at any time. You don't have to wait till the end. Uh, if something comes up, uh, just type it into the uh, question box at any time, and we'll get to that in the Q&A phase. Now, on to today's webinar. I'm going to introduce today's speaker, uh, Janet Jones. She is the Director of Economic Development for the University of Idaho Office of Research and Economic Development. In her role, Jones is tasked with a broad mission of helping connect the university's capabilities to Idaho's economic needs. The Office of Economic Development connects external community partners, large and small, with a range of academic services, resources, and expertise embedded in its campuses and research facilities throughout the state. These services include workforce information, economic impact analyses, business expansion and attraction assistance, municipal project assistance, intellectual property licensing, entrepreneurial support, high-tech equipment and facility access, and uh, quite a lot more. It's a rather large umbrella. Uh, prior to stepping into this role, Jones is Director of Economic Development Services for the Boise Valley Economic Partnership. She previously served as the Economic Development Manager for the Idaho Department of Commerce and spent 12 years in private industry as President of Quality Produce in Boise. Jones was named among North America's top 50 economic developers by Consultant Connect in 2015 and is an executive board member and founding member of the Southwest Idaho Manufacturers Alliance. Uh, and she's also a past president and board member of the Idaho Economic Development Association. Uh, so Janet brings a long and storied background in economic development to the uh, university space, which is a pretty unique uh, thing. And with that, I'm going to hand things over to Jana, who will begin her presentation. So Jana, go ahead and take it away. Good afternoon. Thanks for that wonderful introduction, Eli. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you all today, and I uh, look forward to giving you a little bit of an idea of uh, how we do economic development at the University of Idaho and hopefully that you can reach back out to your local institutions of higher education and learn how to partner with them and your organizations to help you tackle BRE projects as well as business attraction projects in your community. As Eli said, my name is Jenna Jones and I'm the Executive Director of Economic Development at the University of Idaho. We are the state's land grant university and we have a main campus up in Moscow, Idaho as well as regional campuses in Boise, Idaho Falls, Coeur d'Alene, and other regional institutes and research centers, as well as extension offices in 44 of our 42 of our 44 counties. So we are definitely statewide. And I'm trying to move, oh, there we go. Um, I'd like to take, uh, I'd like to start off with just a little bit of an overview of the institutions of higher education in Idaho. As you can see, we have, oh, there we are. As you can see, we have four public four-year universities, four public two-year colleges, 
three private universities and other private higher education institutions in Idaho, such as Carrington College, Concordia, Stephen Henniger, Boise Bible College, and many others. Of these, only two, the University of Idaho and Boise State University, have staff positions that are externally focused and work directly on economic development projects. We are both tasked with creating public and private partnerships, supporting and helping to build and grow vibrant and healthy communities, as well as grow jobs and increase um, tax, the tax base across Idaho. Well, this is a new thing, a fairly new thing for us out here. I have met many university economic development directors across the country that have been around for years. However, when I was working in economic development at the Boise Valley Economic Partnership and at the Idaho Department of Commerce, the main connection I had with our universities was when they were called upon to give data on students, classes, skills, talent pipelines, or um, be involved in site visits and add information to uh, RFIs. Now being on the other side, I can see there are many ways that a college or university can partner with EDOs, and we just need to do a better job of letting our colleagues know how and why they can, or how and why they can connect with us. And that seems to be the trick, finding out how to navigate and connect with the right people at your university. At the University of Idaho, I was able to bring my economic development mindset to this position, and my initial goal was to catalog and publicize the value that we bring to our cities, counties, and regional EDOs. Hopefully, this overview of what we're doing here in Idaho can help you find your own partners. But one thing that I have found is if at, you first don't, if you, if at first you don't succeed in finding the right person, keep trying to open those doors. They are there. Those people are involved in these universities. They are in the hallowed halls, classrooms, and laboratories, but we do a terrible job of making it easy for you all to connect with us. Um, here in Idaho, both Cece Gassner, who is the Economic Development Director at Boise State University and I, are housed in our research and economic development departments at the university. My specific office is titled the Office of Technology, Innovation, and Economic Development, or TIDE for short. And that's another thing that I've learned um, being at the university for a year and a half is that they love their acronyms. So just be aware, spend a lot of time Googling what their acronyms mean so you can actually find the right locations. I think it's safe to say that both Cece and I think of our jobs as front door access to the university, and we are always open and interested in helping to connect economic development professionals as well as community and businesses and industry with our assets and services. We want to make it easy to connect and I hope this presentation will help you find your access points to your regional, economic, your regional universities and colleges. This diagram that is should be showing up. There it is, whoops, now I've gone too far. All right, so this Venn diagram, which comes from APLU, or the Association of Public and Land Grant Universities, and from UEDA, which is the University Economic Development Association, it shows how colleges and universities' core missions are interpreted through the lens of economic development. Both these organizations focus on university economic development engagement and can be valuable resources for everyone that is an economic development professional. Under innovation, the, mission, the innovation mission at universities can be involved in research and science, public policy, humanities, and social realms. And then they're used to create partnerships and research projects with businesses, as well as transferring intellectual property and inventions that come out of university research that can then be licensed to businesses to expand products and to grow jobs. There's also business assistance in incubators, and assistance with entrepreneurs, and many different forms of innovation across the university. In the talent um, circle, uh, we basically see workforce development and talent um, as that cradle to grave human capital and education of our students, as well as research. Um, this involves workforce development, internships, statistics and data for use in economic development projects, 
and different ways that the students can be involved outside the classrooms in actual um, internships and student-led projects with businesses and industries and this communities. And within the place, it focuses mainly on social, cultural, and community development through the stewardship and development of place, which can be clinics, extension offices, schools of business and economics, different departments, all there to help create vibrant communities across the regions that these universities operate in. I want to just go through a few examples of some of the projects that we've been involved in that fall into these three different um, circles. And this will hopefully illustrate a couple of ways that maybe your higher education um, institution that's in your area can help you. One of our projects in the last couple of years was Sakai Casting, which back in 2016, one of our regional economic development executive directors, Jan Rogers, who many of you at IEDC know well, she has been on the board for a number of years. She met a Japanese company that was just at the beginning stages of looking for its first US location for their company. They wanted to uh, manufacture aluminum cast products for cooling and storing of nuclear waste. She convinced them um, initially to attend Select USA conference in Washington, DC, where she was able to spend some more time with the company and learn more about what they were looking for in a new location. Um, the project was uh, moved over to the Idaho Department of Commerce and they named it Project Pro and it went out as an RFI across the state of Idaho, which I assume is very similar to what happens in most um, other states across the US. Um, when the company uh, decided to come out to Idaho to do their site visits. The University of Idaho was involved and part of the ready team. We were able to make introductions during that site visit with our faculty that do research in nuclear engineering. And that was, I think, um, very intrinsic in their decision to locate in Idaho and open up an office in Idaho Falls, where there's a lot of research that's being done at the University of Idaho in conjunction with the Idaho National Lab. Um, in that area. Once the partnership was created, um, there was a grant application that was made to a, a statewide program that's called the Idaho IGEM, and that stands for Idaho Global Entrepreneurial Mission, Entrepreneurial Mission Grant. And this grant application was with the uh, industry partner of Sakai Casting, the University of Idaho and BSU, um, and they were awarded funding to continue research on uh, this new product that this company was trying to bring to market. Um, once this research was started, um, it grew into a, an even more robust economic development project. A group of our state, local, and university folks were able to tour Japan with Sakai Casting, setting up appointments for them over there, and they were able to be introduced to over 12 Japanese companies that were looking at possibly creating offices or opening up um, different uh, processing plants over in Idaho. And then that in turn created a larger site visit this last summer to Idaho from the, um, an additional six Japanese companies that actually made the trip over here to look at this location um, the state of Idaho to potentially open up their next location. So you can see the value of working with your university and um, the businesses, um, when you have businesses that are coming in to help them get um, access to the expertise and also the assets of a university to help with your projects. One of our um, projects that's in the talent um, in the talent bucket is we call Inspire Idaho. This came out of a desire to help rural Idahoans by reducing the barrier to education. As you all know, Idaho is a very rural state and um, most of our, um, many of our um, community members are located in small communities and they don't have the access to the universities or community colleges that we do in our larger metro areas. So this um, program was started through the University of Idaho Coeur d'Alene campus 
And this Inspire Idaho project is a statewide training opportunity. The first one is focused on a teaching and app development um, curriculum with Apple Swift Coding, which is an online program. And because we are the statewide uh, university, the land grant university, and we have extension offices across the state, we were able to offer a place for our local groups to meet with statewide in the statewide offices and they're staffed and coordinated with a team from the University of Idaho. We actually were able to get grants to help um, offer the free Apple Swift coding camp and a free lending library of um, loaner MacBooks to any participants that were not able to, to purchase their own. Um, the first cohort started uh, last spring. I, the second cohort, uh, I, and I think the first cohort started with six or seven teams around the state. Um, I, two of them were in the major metro areas, but the others were out in the rural communities where there's a lot of interest in creating um, these apps that they can either create their own apps to sell or they can go back to the businesses that they operate and create a local app whether it's to help um, a local community find um, information from their, um, their cities and counties, or uh, one of them is looking at doing a library um, search so that someone can search on an app to find where a library book is in the state and bring it into their communities. So very exciting opportunities there in the talent world. In place, one of our um, most successful locations is our Idaho Food Technology Center, which is in Caldwell, Idaho. Um, this space offers assistance to aspiring food entrepreneurs and small-scale food processors to help them learn how to pr produce or to create and produce safely produce their products, as well as bring new ideas to market. Um, this technology center offers business assistance for any um, startup or entrepreneur. They offer processing help in a licensed commercial ki kitchen. They do analytical testing and nutritional testing on products. So someone who's um, operating can bring in an, a new um, product and have it um, analyzed. Um, we also do many different types of training through this center, as in HACCP, which is a hazardous analysis and critical control points training, as well as FISMA, which is the Food Safety and Modernization Act. And many collaborations have come out of just small food processors coming with their ideas and sitting down and talking to the experts at the Food Technology Center about their food business and um, figuring out the best way to bring it to market. As you can see here, here's three of the examples of products that have come out of the Food Technology Center. One is the Fitz Wrap, which is a healthy breakfast burrito. Um, our traditional hummus that's made with Idaho chickpeas, as well as many different types of pickled vegetables and jams and jellies. Um, this is this is a view that we use uh, when we are out talking with businesses and economic development organizations about different ways that we can help um, connect with business and industries, um, bringing our resources to bear. In the services, we offer, offer many different pieces of equipment that are available across the state, um, such as the mass spectrometer, which analyzes chemicals in solid liquids or gas samples. These, this piece of equipment is very expensive and we have a couple of them. So any company that is interested in using this analysis can go to the university and it's normally um, less expensive than going to a uh, private industry to have it done. We also have many different types of fields um, that can be used if someone is creating a new, uh, trying out a new seed or a new agriculture uh, sample or product testing. Here in Boise, we have a water flume that um, does water and stream bed testing. In fact, here in Boise, we have a whitewater park that when they were designing the whitewater park, um, they were able to figure out how to put the different rocks and the different things in the, in the river so that it would create the right type, type of wave for surfing work as well as kayaking. Um, we also have many different types of data management, website and app development, and even a, a, 
a fleet of drones that can go out and do videotaping for communities or for real estate companies. And this, um, it's called NKN, Northwest Knowledge Network. They can actually provide edited footage for use um, by the public. Um, some of the expertise, obviously, is in our research faculty and our faculty in all um, parts of Idaho. Um, we have um, options for student-led project groups, as well as our technology transfer, which I mentioned earlier. Many universities that are involved in research have technology um, ideas and inventions that are able to be licensed by businesses. So if you have local businesses in your communities that are looking for a a new product line, get them in touch with the technology transfer office at their local university. Um, talent information, as mentioned earlier, was one of the first ways that I was engaged with um, higher education when I was doing economic development. And not only do they are we able to provide workforce information in graduates, the skills and the classes, the number of graduates that will be coming out in the pipelines, but there's ways to connect your local businesses with internships and um, hire, we call it hire a vandal. So there's job boards at the universities. Um, career fairs at our university have become a, a major way for our local businesses to connect with the potential uh, workforce. And one of the new things that we are doing is our career services. Um, I think the next large career fair is in October up in our Moscow campus and there's over 130 businesses that are there to talk with the students but we are also bringing in economic development organizations to bring in their booth one of them is a, a, a Y Boise booth to talk to the students about why what's going on down here in um, the Boise area and convince them that staying in Idaho after they graduate and looking for a job down here is a great way um, a, a great path for them. So as an economic development organization, it might be a good idea to, to look and see if there are ways that you can connect with your, um, your universities to be part of their career fairs. Um, in addition, research can assist business and industries with new products and new ways of doing things. Um, we can help create reports and be part of local and regional strategic initiatives. Our university is very strong in research and our collaboration on grants such as the iGEM grant is one of the things that we um, work on quite a bit with industry and economic development organizations. Um, just, just another list of some of our examples that we work of the things that we do with um, businesses and and some of our most requested is our assistance through our small business legal clinic, which is from our college or our, our law school. This clinic will help with transactional legal problems for business owners and entrepreneurs, such as employment agreements, review, commercial leases, and formation of business entities. So any questions that you get from your local constituents, you can possibly um, forward them to a university to get some help. Our law school also administers a patent and pro bono program that helps qualified Idaho inventors navigate the patent process with volunteer attorneys. And that has been a very successful partnership in helping um, local um, inventors figure out how they can get their idea patented. We also offer a very interesting business process center through the School of Business and Economics that will help manufacturing and process companies. And it's a team of faculty and students that come out and study damaged business processes. And then they go back and create ways to redesign and improve the thing, the way things are done to increase the company's effectiveness. One of the examples that they use is a large potato manufacturing company was trying to decide if they could put in a new line of product so we got them connected with this business process center. The students and faculty went out. They studied how the business was operating now, and they were able to come back with a report and let them know exactly how many new employees they would need, what the cost would be to add this new line if they needed to build onto the building, and also um, um, be able to show them how much money in um, the in this. Um, when they put in this new line, how that how much new money this would 
would help them with. So it was great because it helped not only the business, but also gave the students real world experience. So they, when they were able to graduate, they went away with a, an actual project in their portfolio. One of our other very popular assistance programs that we offer is the Integrated Design Lab, which is dedicated to the development of high performance, energy efficient buildings here in the Intermountain West. They also house a tool loan library, which is a free resource with hundreds of diagnostic tools that can be checked out by builders and contractors that support energy efficient building design, including if a, a contractor or developer is doing energy audits, lighting energy use and studies, air balance issues, chiller efficiency metrics. Um, this is something that is also checked out and used very often. Some of our community and economic um, assistance is our standard business retention and attraction projects where we are brought in with either cities or counties or regional groups to be part of their ready team to talk about ways that the university can partner and also the ways that our students can potentially be in, in future employees for this company. We're involved in state and regional initiatives around the, the whole area. Um, we have a wonderful organization that's called the McClure Center for Public Policy. Um, the McClure Center, um, not only do they do uh, white papers and conduct policy analysis, but they can lead strategic planning and conceptualization for events and uh, rural communities are able to tap into this resource as well as our urban areas. They provide training and workshops and I have found that recently we have had a lot, a lot of in, um, requests for economic impact reports, either from communities or economic development organizations, associations, and businesses that are looking to have the university um, through the McClure Center or directly with our business and economics school um, conduct the economic impact report so that they can then turn around and go back out to their communities and explain why this new business would be a, um, a positive for the region or if a new if a business was looking at leaving um, how that's going to impact the, the region. Um, we have a bioregional planning and community design uh, master's program which works with some of our communities to help them design um, their downtown corridors and this and for us our extension offices which I mentioned are in 42 of our 44 counties, um, have a lot of training opportunities. They, we have some online free on, online entrepreneurship classes that are offered through extension. But these are great locations, especially if you're in a rural state, to help you get connected with some of the um, services that the university can, can help you with. So the, the, the question is always, how do you connect with a university? In many universities, um, it's very difficult to figure out who exactly you need to, to contact because there are many different ways in, of getting into a university. Um, obviously, searching for economic development directors through a university is one of the best ways. A school of Business and Economics um, normally have a very robust engagement and outreach group. There are many other colleges across our university that have advancement directors that are also involved in engagement projects outside of their colleges. Um, corporate and foundation relation offices um, are usually a good place to, if, if that's all you can find, a, a good place to contact and they can help you um, navigate what college you need to be trying to get into. Or all, um, if all else fails, check with your pro provost or president's office and um, see if they can help you get connected. Um, I've listed here a few of the associations, the UEDA, which is the University Economic Development Association, which is a, a national organization of economic development professionals at universities. Um, you could probably go on their website and find local connections, also the APLU, which is the public and land grant institutions are very engaged with economic and economic development and community development projects. So um, there's also an association called the University uh, Association of 
sorry, Association of Uni University Research Parks to look into. And that is kind of my, my overview of the ways that the University of Idaho has um, taken this economic development connection and engagement idea, and we are pushing it out and creating new opportunities across the state for our communities, business, and industries to get connected with the assets and services. Luckily, um, my, uh, our university, our president and provost, and the Office of Research and Economic Development is very interested in this engagement and um, economic assistance that we can offer to our community. So I spend a lot of my time traveling around the state getting connected, and I would assume that in most states across uh, this, in most states across the country, as well as in your region, your university, especially these days with the um, fight for funding and the partnerships that they are trying to create with business and industry, and also in getting more students to come to our universities, they are very interested in, in ways that they can partner. So my biggest suggestion is reach out and start asking the questions and don't give up. And it's, it's an interesting um, culture at a university, um, but all in all, they are very um, interested in helping and open to, to talking about different ways and projects that they can help um, across their regions. So at this time, I'd like to open it up for questions and see if there's anything else that I can, can answer. Thanks so much, Jana, for that great presentation. Um, yes, and please, uh, for all the attendees, um, if you would like to pose any questions to Jana, uh, please do so now by typing your question into the uh, questions box there. We'll uh, give people a few minutes to put some in. <coughs> to, uh, in the meantime, uh, Jana, I, I had a question that I thought of for you. Um, is it typically you in your office that is um, forging these connections, or is it more often the case that is the uh, community approaching the university, um, or does that is it kind of a mixed bag? I, I would say for us, it's um, a mixed bag. Um, I have. So I've been at the university for a year and a half, and in that time, um, because I had been in economic development for quite a few years and I had a lot of contacts around the state, I was able to go out and meet with my um, economic development colleagues and say, what is it that you would like to see the university doing in either in economic development or in your community development space? Where are you seeing gaps that the university may have access or help that, that you don't know about. So I started off with a list of that. At the same time, we were cataloging all of the different ways that the university has access points that maybe are not well publicized. So we've been spending the last probably nine or 12 months going out and revisiting with economic development organizations saying, here's what you were saying Previously, you needed some help in your getting connected with um, strategic planning help or community focus groups because you had a, a new project that you were trying to roll out or being involved in, in site visits by giving this specific information. So we were able to go back out and say, here's actually where we can get that information. You can always come to me and I can help get you connected, but in the future, here's um, maybe our bioregional planning or our um, um, diff, our School of Business and Economics connections to help. So it's a little bit of both. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, we have some more questions rolling in now. Um, here's one from uh, our committee chair, Mark Lang. Um, and his question is, uh, what is your relationship with uh, your state um, and the Department of Commerce? And um, also, what budget are you working with? So um, 
my my relationship with the art department of commerce is i i used to work there so i'm very well aware of the um, projects and the programs that they have over there and the incentives and those types of things and i think i have a, a good relationship with everyone in economic development um, we work closely on some of the um, statewide initiatives uh, yesterday we were all at a a workforce at the future of work um, conference and talking about different ways that the university as well as other organizations across the state can help with workforce development um, so i think most universities that i know of and the people that are in economic development in universities have a have a really strong connection with their state and their regional economic development organizations I mean, the, the conversations that we have um, talk about long-term strategic plans that the Com Department of Commerce is putting together, whether it's industry clusters or workforce development or incentives, and how we can participate and, and assist in that. Um, the budget that I'm operating under is um, it's part of the Office of Research and Economic Development. Um, I have... It, it, fluctuates a little bit depending on what um, projects I see coming up and sponsorship and um, programs that we want to roll out. Um, right now it's it's only about um, I think 200,000 and that includes all my travel around the state and some of the um, programs that we're working on but I know there's a lot of other larger institutions of higher education across the country that are putting a lot more money into their economic development um, departments and I would suggest that anybody who's out there that's interested in connecting and has a great idea for a for a way that the local university can help whether it's help in in a business business incubator or a um, food technology center that they start those conversations great thank you um... We have a question, too, um, from Anne-Marie Maloney, um, uh, and it is, uh, do you have suggestions for uh, EDOs uh, that want to approach their higher ed institution? Um, any do's and don'ts in terms of uh, getting that conversation started? And, um, you know, I think that's especially good um, for, you know, working with an university that doesn't have a uh, sort of front door uh, that your office provides? Um, what I've noticed in um, meeting the other economic development directors across the country is we are we are very interested in helping and most uh, and most of us have come from the economic development realm and I remember being involved in projects and um, either business retention and expansion or attraction projects and and just wanting some some help so I would say that if you can find somebody who has any or find your university and if they have an economic development director you know um, meet them for coffee go to their offices talk to them about what your long-term goals are and just ask if there are ways that the university can help and possibly partner. Um, I've had a couple of times when community communities have come and said, hey, we want you to build a, a business um, an incubator, a business incubator, a startup area, a entrepreneurship program in our community. And those types of projects take a long time and because of, of the budget cuts that I think everybody is under, that's probably something that, that the university is not going to be able to do in most communities. I, I might be wrong. There's probably a lot of larger universities that have a lot more money. Um, but in my, um, in my past, I think everybody who has um, contacted me, I've sat down with them and said, you know, how can I help? Let me see if I can find the right expert at the university, whether it's a faculty member or a, a division or a department within the university. Um, it's the, it's all that relationship building, and that was one of the reasons why at the University of Idaho and I think also at BSU, 
they created this economic development engagement person that actually is externally facing and, and going to be the face of the university um, in meetings and at events so that people can start the, the conversations and that bridge building and see what we can um, do for the future to create jobs and create vibrant communities in our states. Great, thank you. Um, another question, uh, Jana, is how do the various institutions and departments at the university play together in this model? And, um, you know, is it difficult uh, managing all those different uh, departments? Good question. Um, <laughs> what, what I have found and, and I know this is true not only in higher education, but it's true in, in business and in government. You find your champions. And um, I have great, while I'm located in Boise and our main campus is up in Moscow, I have great um, connections up there. I work directly with um, Jeremy Tamson, who's our um, Director of Office of Technology Transfer. Um, we find the faculty and the people who are interested in being engaged and this um, external um, outreach. And so we, we know who to go to to get questions answered. We know who within a, either a department or a faculty or a college is the one who says, yes, this is something that I want to be involved in. Let's figure out how I can, how I can participate. Um, you know, there's always a couple of people who you run into that are just not, uh, they just don't have the time. And um, we have a lot of faculty who are spread very thin with teaching and research and publications and things, but there are a number of them that um, are very much involved in what I do and the work that I'm trying to engage our a university in and are always there right at my side willing to see how we can figure out how a university can help. So um, I, I, my my advice to myself after my first kind of going through a door and then having the person on the other side of the door shut it on me and say, sorry, we're just too busy, we can't help, was to find another door. And I've also found that younger faculty are very much involved and interested in getting involved in projects. So um, don't give up. If you are running into a, a few closed doors, I would say just try to find somebody else who can help you get that connection. Um, and once you find it, then nurture it. Those are, those are good words for working and creating relationships anywhere. Yeah, that's great insight. Um... Another question uh, is, you know, uh, if you could talk a little bit more about um, what you do as in the connections role and um, in terms of like communicating and marketing what services that you have to offer. Well, we, um, we have a um, website that is not very robust yet, but we are working on the back end to, to create kind of drop down menus and a question center where you, as a business you could come, you could write in your question and it would come to a group of us and then we would find the contact. Um, one of the other projects that we're working on creating is a kind of a, a little little book of state of Idaho assistance for um, business startups and existing businesses and it will be something that um, encompasses not only our university, but other ways that uh, a business in Idaho can find assistance. So um, that's something that we hope to roll out here in probably the next six months is this, this kind of look, little book of business assistance across Idaho and, and we're gathering information from all of our, our partners, SBDC, the Department of Commerce, um, Tech Help, in all of the universities and community colleges and also just just ways that especially our rural economic development professionals if you're um, in salmon idaho and trying to figure out how and where you can get some help um, this this will be a little book that's also going to be online that can help you get connected so 
Um, that's one of the things that we're doing. Um, the, the other thing that I've, I've uh, mentioned is if within your community you have a need, talk to your local university or community college, um, whether it's a workforce development person or or an economic development person and just say, hey, here's where I'm trying to go. Can you help me get there? Um, we are all very interested and open to new ideas. So that would be my suggestion. Yeah, great. Um, uh, I have a question too uh, about when it comes to funding. Um, you know, you mentioned working under a uh, um, strained budget, and I know that's something that's pretty commonplace these days in higher education. Um, are there uh, certain situations where um, you ask that a community, uh, you know, put some skin in the game in terms of money and um, related, are there, you know, sort of cost sharing or um, interesting fundraising uh, things you've been able to achieve to offset some of the costs of these projects? Well, that's a great question. Um, so some of our um, services are fee-based. Um, if you're going to use the mass spectrometer, um, there's a, a fee to use it. Um, and I would think uh, most universities are the same. There are ways that think that these fees, which are normally less than if you were to go out to find um, the same sort of equipment in another private industry, or if you were looking for a consultant to come in and do an economic impact report, or um, assist with a downtown planning charrette or something like that, there, the costs are normally less. Um, there are usually opportunities that we look for for grant funding. Um, there is a number of ways that we can get funding across the state of Idaho. There's some great partners that we turn to when we have these projects, whether it's through the Department of Commerce, um, some of the state EDA, the EDA grants, the rural um, development grants. Um, if it's a food processing related, there's some um, um, Idaho Department of Agriculture funding. So there's, we have a whole team of people who are involved in grants, so they kind of know where to go look. So if it's a project that you're looking at helping or want to have in your community, then I would suggest talking with um, your, your university. They have an Office of Sponsored Programs. There's possibly ways to help um, get grant funding. Um, and I think there was, what was the other part of your question? I don't, I can't remember. Oh, um, no, I think you, uh... You answered it pretty well. Um, just uh, creative, um, you know, cost sharing models or, um, you know, working under uh, smaller budgets. But yeah, yeah, no, I think that's good insight. Um, uh, something else I wanted to ask, um, you know, you your office can open a lot of um, services to communities. Uh, which ones, which of the services you offer would you say get economic developers the most excited? And second part, um, what services are often neglected that you think uh, the local economic developer should actually be way more excited about? Um, the ones that I have noticed especially an uptick lately is, I think I mentioned the economic impact reports. We've had a number of associations that are, are planning for their legislative, um, uh, their legislative plans for the next couple of years. And so they're reaching out to get some data and statistics um, from us. Um, so that's been a huge uh, driver of just connections. Um, the ones that I think that we could potentially help more on, and, and this is something that if a business or an industry or an economic development organization has an interest in it, knowing that you're working with a university and that we are on a 
Um, semester system is also something good to keep in your mind. We've had, I, I think there's a lot more um, student-led projects that we could be involved in. And we're starting to see a number of um, communities that are looking at assistance through our Bus School of Business and Economics, bringing in a student-led group. Um, we also have student-led groups that, are, that do marketing and help with Facebook marketing and help with putting together websites. But these projects take time, and that's something that um, I've had a few people who have reached out and said, hey, I, I need this help, but I need um, you know, the final report or this information within a couple of months. And unfortunately, universities don't operate that way. The ones that work well are the ones that have reached out to me over the summer. We get started with, um, with designing the program through the fall semester, working with the faculty and they start gathering the students. And then in the spring semester, right after the first of the year, we create either a capstone project or a student group that is actually a project through a class. So there'll be faculty involvement, but the students do most of the work. And then at the end of the semester, they present to the community or they present to the, the business or industry. Um, the, the beauty of that is, is it gives that student something that they can put in their portfolio when they graduate and actually go out and show that they've had connections and here's what they've done. But for a, a community group, um, if, if you're okay with that time frame, then that, I think that's always one of the best ways that you can get involved with your university. It helps, it helps you get the information you need and it also helps um, the students get uh, real world experiences. Yeah, that's great. Um, that kind of reminded me, um, you know, are, are there other ways that uh, the university is getting the students involved specifically in economic development uh, or, you know, local governance in any capacity? Um, there is a, let me just find my information. There is a, one of our, um, one of our, our College of Law, we do have not only the Small Business Legal Clinic, but we've had a economic development clinic that has helped communities with um, legal issues and just helping them when, when they are not able to, they, they just need to understand the way things, what's going on. Um, unfortunately, the person who runs that, and this is another thing that you have to remember when you're working with a university, is the person who runs that is on sabbatical. So he is not here for a year and we'll be back at, in, on January 1. So any of the requests that I have coming in for the economic development clinic through the College of Law um, need to kind of wait. Um, that's not always easy for an economic development organization. We also have a, um, an, one of our professors in um, College of Public Sci or um, political science has a an organization that is called the I can't think of the name right now but it's um, um, it is involved with going out to communities and helping put on um, focus groups he, he works with communities helping to educate the the um, city council members or the community at large or county commissioners on projects, creating focus groups, facilitating discussions, especially in contentious issues, they'll come out to the community. It's a very low cost. Um, they bring their, the faculty and some of the students to kind of be involved in these um, community projects. Um, that's one of the ways that the students are getting connected with economic development organizations and community more community organizations and being involved um, on the ground and deciding if you know if they want to go into political science or public policy or um, community development or economic development. That's great. Yeah, very interesting. Um, I think uh, that concludes our questions, unless anybody wants to type one in really quick. Um, we're down to the last few minutes uh, of our hour. Um, 
But with that, uh, I'd just like to say thanks once again to Janet Jones for sharing her insight with us today. And thank you to all the members of the Higher Education Advisory Committee that were able to join us for this webinar. Uh, we'll notify committee members of future presentations this year as they're scheduled. We'll also send out a recording of this one. And with that, I'd just like to say thanks on behalf of IEDC for your participation. And we hope to see you again sometime in the future. Well, thanks everyone for who took the time to join us this afternoon. And my contact information is there if you have any questions or, or just would like to um, noodle over an, an issue or a project. And maybe I can help you get connected um, with some of your local people. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Jana. And thanks, everyone. And take care. Thanks. Bye-bye.